Hey everyone, Greg Wade here. Today we're gonna make some whole wheat brioche sticky buns. Let's get started. So the first step to mixing our dough is to pre-ferment some flour. So we're gonna make a biga. Uh, biga is a, a general term for a drier pre-ferment. Uh, so we're gonna add 25 grams of water to a bowl with about 25 grams of wheat flour and 20 grams of bread flour. And about half a gram, or really just a pinch of dry yeast. And we're gonna mix this up by hand until it's all combined, okay? When I make brioche, I prefer using uh, what's called osmotolerant uh, dry yeast. It's a uh, yeast that has been trained to still be able to ferment when there is some sugar in the dough, okay? Uh, so since brioches generally do contain sugar, this one will contain honey. Uh, we want our yeast to be able to still be nice and active, so we use the proper yeast, which is, again, osmotolerant yeast. Usually you'll find it as an SAF gold. Uh, but if you can't find that, uh, your, your regular active dry will be just fine. Okay, so uh, I just mix this together until all of the flour is absorbed. And now I'm gonna cover this and let it ferment uh, at room temperature for 12 hours. All right, so we are ready to mix our brioche dough for our sticky buns. Our biga is ready. It's been fermenting for 12 hours. Uh, you can tell it's ready because it's about doubled in size. It's light, it's airy, but it still has some structure to it when I pull at it. So that's going into the mixing bowl along with 130 grams of eggs, 85 grams of bread flour, 65 grams of wheat flour, this one, yeast is going straight in, two grams. Again, we're using osmotolerant dry yeast or just active dry if you can't find the osmotolerant. And then five grams of salt along with 25 grams of honey. So you'll notice this time our salt and our yeast went right in uh, because we are not doing an auto lease for this dough. Okay, so this is just going to be called a straight mix. I am reserving my butter though. Uh, you create a strong brioche by uh, mixing it strong first, and then you add your fat, okay? So I'm going to mix this on slow until all of my ingredients are combined. So mix it on slow until everything is all homogenous and then you can start turning it up a little bit to develop your dough strength. This should take, uh, you know, 10 or 12 minutes in a mixer. Okay, so our, our dough has been mixing for about 10 minutes and you can see that it's really balling up in the center there. Um, and it's becoming uh, really smooth and shiny, and that's really what you're looking for in good uh, dough development. Uh, and then if I take a uh, little pinch of it, it's very, very strong, and then I can actually stretch this out to window paint it, so it's very, very elastic, and you can see very good gluten development, okay? So with brioche, you do this first, and then you add your fat. So now we're gonna add our butter, um, and you want to use uh, still kind of chilled butter, but you want it to be pliable. You don't want it to be uh, really over room temperature. You don't want it to be greasy. Otherwise, your, your brioche will be greasy. So you use kind of cool butter, and it should be pliable. If you're using straight from the fridge, you can kind of beat it uh, with a little uh, rolling pin until it is pliable. And then just add your butter a few pinches at a time. And this way the, uh, the brioche stays strong and uh, becomes nice and light and fluffy uh, because the, the butter coats those really long gluten strands um, instead of incorporating into the dough uh, when you first do your initial mix. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. 
to help it along. So my butter is mostly in there. So I'm gonna add my second addition and make sure it goes down in. And now I'm just going to mix this for another minute or so until all of the butter is nicely incorporated. But you can see that it stays one cohesive mass. So it should just take another minute or so. Okay, so it looks like all my butter is in. And my dough still feels very strong. So I'm gonna call this done. Okay, so. Let me take this off. So now you can see that my dough is very smooth and strong and elastic, uh, but it does not look greasy at all because of the way that we mixed the dough. So now we're going to let this ferment at room temperature for about two, maybe three hours. It should double in size, and then we will fold it and put it into the refrigerator overnight. Okay, so our brioche dough has been proofing at room temperature for about two hours. Uh, you can see that it's about doubled in size. It's really uh, light and airy, um, and uh, this is now going to be folded. So I just take each side and kind of tuck it underneath the dough itself to uh, create a little bit of strength and get some fresh oxygen in there. So I'm gonna cover this, and I'm gonna let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. So first thing we're gonna do when we're ready to shape our sticky buns is to prepare the pan with our sticky goop. We're gonna do that by taking 110 grams of butter, and that goes into a small pot. And then we melt it with 275 grams of dark brown sugar. Okay, so we're just gonna let this melt. Okay, so we're melting our butter and brown sugar together in the pot. Uh, you do wanna make sure that all of the brown sugar uh, d dissolves into the butter. And we're, uh, we're looking good here. So it's all smooth, melted together. So we are all set. What we're gonna do is add our buttermilk, 175 grams, to this. Watch out, it will splatter a little bit. And then you can turn the heat off. Okay, so to this we'll add five grams of salt. And then also five grams of vanilla. You can use extract, you can use paste, uh, either one is fine. And then once everything is together and melted together and looking nice and velvety, you just pour the whole thing into the base of the pan. Okay, now allow this to cool to room temperature and then uh, we will shape the rest of our buns and, uh, and then place them into the, uh, into the pan. Okay, we are ready to shape and roll our uh, cinnamon buns. So the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, make our filling. We're gonna do that by taking 160 grams of dark brown sugar and 10 grams of cinnamon and uh, combine them in a bowl. Just rub them through your fingers and make sure that everything is uh, nicely mixed up here. Okay, also for the filling, you're gonna need 60 grams of melted butter, but keep that off to the side for now. Okay, so this doesn't take long, you just need to make sure that all the bigger chunks of the uh, brown sugar are uh, broken up and then you toss the cinnamon with it. So I'm gonna set that off to the side for now. And then I'm going to dust a little bit of flour on my work surface, and I've got my nicely risen dough straight from the cooler. Okay, so that goes in the flour, and then a little bit of flour on top to be able to work with it. Okay, so now you take your rolling pin, 
and roll it down into the counter. Make sure that you, uh, if you feel it sticking, don't be afraid to get a little bit more flour on the, uh, on the dough itself, okay? So now you've got a couple of options on how you're actually going to make your buns. Okay, so when you actually put your filling, remember we're gonna roll it up with the filling inside, okay? So if you like really, really thick uh, buns like you would find at a certain chain, you would want to make sure that you've got a lot of space uh, going uh, in front of you to make that really large roll. If you would like smaller rolls, um, you would want uh, less space here, but you're gonna elongate it more this way, so that means you're gonna get more of them. Generally makes sense? Cool. So, I personally like a thicker style bun. So I'm going to roll this to be just about a quarter inch thick, and then I'm going to have it with the long side in front of me this way, okay? So this generally looks good to me. You can try to even it out. You can gently pull if you need to. If you're looking for a rectangle, it's gonna end up looking more uh, nice and even if you start a nice and even here, okay? Next, what we're gonna do, pour that 60 grams of melted butter all over the uh, dough and then just gently brush it over the surface area of the dough. You do want to leave about a half inch strip at the very top uh, to help the, uh, the dough seal. Okay, next I'm going to take all of the filling and dust it over the uh, butter evenly. Okay. And then just kind of even it out by pressing your filling around and then you'll actually want to press into the dough like this. Okay, so this will help it stick and make sure that your uh, filling doesn't fall out once your, uh, once your uh, dough is proofed and baked. Now, it's time to roll. What I'm gonna do is, you can use your finger for this or you can use a pastry brush, but get that top strip that you did not put any sugar and butter on. Just get it wet with a little bit of water uh, because this will help the dough stick to itself. Remember, uh, wet uh, dough will stick to itself, but it will not stick to you if you are wet, okay? Then, starting with the bottom, we just make a center and then you roll it forward. Kind of tuck it in as you go so it'll be nice and tight. Then as you get to the end, you make sure that the, uh, the length is the same. Then you kind of roll on that seam just a little bit to help seal it. And that's our roll, okay? Now you're gonna cut it into your buns. Again, if you like, if you like bigger buns, you're gonna cut this a little, little thicker. If you like them smaller, then you cut them smaller. But for this, what we're gonna do is cut uh, the dough in half, and then each of these halves into about thirds. You wanna use a sharp knife for this, so when you go and cut it, you're gonna have that exposed spiral. Okay, if you don't use a sharp knife, what you're gonna do is uh, uh, pinch the dough down and um, it's just not gonna look as clean, okay? So again, in about thirds, just like this, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is just gently press them down to make it into a kind of fa a fatter disc. Okay, just like that. But you want that spiral to be showing, okay? And then we place them into the sticky 
goop. Okay. Uh, a good idea is to where your seam is, where your roll has uh, joined with itself. You want those that to face in, so when they proof, uh, they'll kind of proof against each other, and you'll have less of a chance of them unraveling as they bake. So you want to give them a little bit of space to be able to to proof. Um, but these will, with these will uh, bake together, okay? So uh, these are now going to proof at room temperature. I'm just going to put the lid on top of the uh, pan, and then these are going to proof at room temperature for about two to two and a half hours until they're really nice and light and airy. All right, our buns have been proofing for about two, two and a half hours at room temperature. Uh, I proof them with the lid on. It's really, uh, really convenient actually about this pan to be able to proof these buns with the, with the lid like this. So let's see if they're ready, which they are. Uh, they are really, really nicely proofed and large and light and fluffy looking. You can see everything's really filled in really nicely. So we're gonna bake these at 350 for about an hour. All right, so the buns have been in the oven for about 30, 35 minutes. Uh, remember, we're looking for uh, really golden brown, uh, delicious looking buns. Uh, so let's check on them. All right, so these look great to me. They are really golden brown and delicious looking. Uh, the, the sticky goop is just oozing away. This is really, really great. Uh, what I'm going to do is take the challenger pan out of the baking rack. I'm going to set a cooling rack here. And then we're going to invert the buns, allowing the goop to fall all over them, okay? So be careful with this. But that's what you're looking for, is all of this nice goopy, syrupy stuff to be just falling all over them. Allow these to cool for a little bit before you, before you dig in, because again, this is pretty much just hot syrup on the, uh, on the buns there. Okay, so our buns have cooled slightly. Remember, these are best served warm, so don't be afraid to dig into them just a little bit early, but uh, make sure that you don't uh, burn yourself. So these are uh, still really nice and warm, and as I tear it apart, Really, I always go for the center right away. This is the best part anyway, right? Um, it's got that goop all over it and fell down into the crease layers, and this is really just a nice and soft and light and fluffy bread. Mm. And you got the fluffiness from the brioche and the, the cinnamon and the brown sugar all baked together with vanilla. Um, this is just one of those stupid good pieces of pieces of bread. Mm -hmm.